What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And today on Cars and Cameras, we are doing some upgrades and modifications to our Bronco Power Wheels four-wheel drive go-kart. The first and foremost one being, we're changing the gearing again. We've already changed the gearing once, it was still too tall. We're gonna change it one more time and try to find that sweet spot of killer off-the-line acceleration while maintaining a 40 to maybe 45 mile an hour top speed. I don't think 40 for 45 top speed because I gotta tell you, man, I'm pretty disappointed in this gear. You ordered it online. Yep. I wish I had known about it because I would have wanted to grind off that enormous hub. We are adding, man, this thing's got to be three pounds at least. Yep. Anyway, other than changing the sprocket, we are gonna relocate the brake to a position where it'll be more effective and easier to use. We're gonna take a look at the steering because if this project has one downside, it's the fact that the steering is just a bear to turn. Uh, other than that, we're gonna add a seat pad just so the jumps are a lot nicer to land on. Let's get to it. I gotta say, man, I think our seat turned out really well, our seat fuel tank combo. Not too bad. Not too bad, it just needs a little bit of padding. You don't want to get rear-ended in an accident. Yeah, it'll be a pinto. Let me see if I can take this pan out without taking the front body off. Oh, I'm forgetting one. Oh yeah. Yep, oh right yeah, there. there it is. There it is. Uh, you kind of have to... Yeah, crazy angles. Yeah, exactly. Ah, I think I found the, the secret. Uh-oh. Bingo. <clears throat> Not bad. I like it, dude. Not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. Look at our control arms down there. Uh-oh. They're, they're just, you know, cockeyed and stuff. It'll be all right. What do you mean? The angles of the dangle. Yeah. It's all right. I mean, it still works. That's why the brake's not working good. Yeah. Hey, you remember they said it could never be done? We could never get articulation with the chain set up like that? Dude, we got crazy articulation. We haven't popped a chain yet. Nope. The only chain that we're popping is this loose one right here going to the torque converter. Yep, because we knew we were changing that sprocket. Yep. Let's take it out. dude wow the weight difference is crazy all right so there's the two different sizes so we're taking off a 36 right and we're putting on a 40 36 yep and putting on a 40 so not going to be a huge difference except for the weight look, <laughs> look at that hub size compared to that hub size yeah it's a little bit of a bummer man it's a lot of extra weight we're adding to this thing unnecessary it's disappointing if i had known about that i would want to i would have put it on the lathe and yeah. turned it down yeah, to about sure. that hub size yeah I hear you. but i mean it, it is what it is it's here now we'll just deal with it it probably won't break at least <laughs> it shouldn't break dude so. all right well you're gonna handle the sprocket yeah and i'm gonna get to work on the brake sounds good this drum brake is gonna go on the central jack shaft. We should have more brake leverage. Is that the right? Brake power, it, it'll be like power brakes. It'll be like having power brakes. So we're sticking with the hand brake. It should work really well uh, for us. This brake kit, heck, the original brake kit was from gopowersports.com. They sell uh, drum brakes, disc brakes, mechanical, uh, hydraulic, any kind of brakes for your mini bikes or go-karts, whether they're small or big, heck, even some, uh, even some small UTVs they sell brakes for, they can hook you up. We will link these down in the description of this video. 
I personally really like these hubs that they recently come out with because uh, they really just bolt up to everything. They're made to bolt up to all kinds of different types of, of brakes. And yes, thank you, Ike. We have our, uh, our brake shoe as well. Uh, brake band in this case. Yeah. So cool. I'm going to go ahead and work on installing it. We're going to need to figure out where to kind of mount our linkage at and we'll keep on moving. If you're placing an order at gopowersports.com, let them know at checkout that Cars and Cameras sent you. All right, man, let's get to it. Uh, we have the drum brake mocked up and about halfway installed, and we have our new sprocket installed as well. Ike is just reinstalling chains, and I've been fooling with the brake. I thought I'd share some tips on setting up a drum brake setup on a go-kart mini bike or four-wheel drive Bronco go-kart, if anyone else out there has one. From our experience of setting up a couple of these drum brakes over the years, uh, it's always best to have your drum and band as close to a point on the chassis as you can, because that means your mounting point is gonna be that much closer to your brake band, and it's just gonna be a lot stronger. So that's what we've done with our upper mount in this case. The lower mount needs a cable, which the housing needs to be hard mounted somewhere, and this piece, the cable itself, has to get mounted to the lower brake band, usually with like a bolt and a nut. So that's exactly what I've done. I've welded a nut with a slot cut in it to our floor mount there. It still has to get reinforced. Um, but I also have a bolt with a slot cut in it. You can just put it right over the cable like so. It countersinks into the housing like that. And then we thread it into the nut and that's gonna be our cable housing stop. And so when you pull the brake, this is gonna move and that's, as, that's what's gonna engage our brake. So that's just a little bit of a 101 on drum brakes. So we have our brand new sprocket installed. I installed the chains and while John is putting our brand new seat pad in because he's such a baby, uh, I'm gonna be putting the floor in and moving the fuel line. So we're right there guys. Man. You were more sore for longer than I was. <laughs> so we've built maybe two or three seats out of this material. This is camping foam that you would sleep on from like Walmart. I wanna say it's like $8 for a roll. And I imagine you could probably make three or four seats out of a roll. It's firm, but with a little bit of cush. Yeah, that's right. It's not gonna be a Cadillac but it'll be a whole lot better than what we got. So the spray adhesive we're using is 3M High Strength 90. We've used it in the past and it works pretty good. So you want to apply one to three coats to each surface. Let it tack up for one to 10 minutes and then apply. We got a faulty can, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I shot the Bronco. No! Oh, this is bad. So, why don't I move the Bronco before you hit it's it not a bad even idea. more? Yeah, go ahead. All man. right. All right, so after like, I don't know, 10 minutes, we should be able to apply that pad Stick her down and you ain't gonna get that thing up. Cool. You wanna give it a touch with your knuckle and when it doesn't transfer any more glue to your finger, show your knuckle, it's ready to go. Little transfer here, but that one's ready, so. Yeah, I say we fly, dude. So I'm gonna, yeah, let her. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh, looky there. Good job, bud. Thanks, man. Oh, it looks so much more comfortable already. You gonna try it? Uh, no, I mean, I'll let you do it. It's better. 
It sounds like you're a little disappointed. It's still pretty hard, honestly. Yeah. But it's going to take the bite out of those jumps. Right. Maybe it'll break in. Okay. But it's better. Okay. For sure. I mean, it's not like a real plushy No, I mean, it's material. only that thick. It can't, yeah. it can't give that much, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We have compression in our uh, fuel tank. Yep. But, yeah, when you when you compress on it, it squishes even more, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully that'll do us. Hopefully that'll do us. All right. That's right. And Tightening up the floorboard, I see. Tightening up the floorboard, man. Man, we're going to be, uh, I know I keep saying it, but right there, man. Right there. We're going for one quick ride because we were supposed to get three inches of snow. We got rain and freezing rain. Yep. A whole lot less fun. Mm, yeah. So we're going to be turning this thing around, going out the door, spinning around, coming back in. <laughs> I will. That's a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> you are wrapped up, dude. I know I am. Wow. That thing looks like the gearing is uh, pretty awesome. Gearing's pretty good. Uh, still might be like two teeth too tall. I'm okay with it. For for mudding and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, It's got some legs, man. <laughs> it looks pretty fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the problem with the tires is that anytime you turn, it just scoops right into your face. Yeah. Um, the brakes attempt to do something. Uh huh. They don't really do anything. Okay. Well, I think that maybe if we just switch the steering wheel to a different style. Yeah. Where we can really get the handles to. We won't have all that. Yeah. And a uh, new cable because the cable is actually contracting when we're braking. Yeah. So it's real spongy. So, it looks like a fun time, dude. You were hauling. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, the, the lean is a little bit sketchy, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, it's definitely soft, you know. When it comes to vehicle design, you can usually either rock crawl or do sling around drifty stuff. You can't really do sling around drifty stuff in this. No. Because um, it'll go over it, it. But it gives you plenty of warning. It, it'll pick up a tire and be like, hey, you better take it easy. Yeah. Um, man. Did you feel any tooth jump with the chain, or or did it feel good? Or it was like a, a little bit chunky, just a little bit. I wonder but, if it's uh, the because the uh, small gears on the axles. I don't know. It felt pretty okay. I wasn't paying attention so much to that. Um, you know our darn universal joint steering down there. Yeah. This makes it real sketchy. Okay. High speed. So we'll we'll look into uh. 
changing the steering on it. Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. But dude, um, other than that, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I just love it when a project starts to come together, man. This last test drive, even though the weather was miserable, uh, proves that this thing's really shaping up. And I don't think we ever claim to be experts, but darn. So it's taken a, oh God, all right. Excuse me. <laughs> anyway, so it's always great when a project starts to come together. Um, this one's needed quite a bit of fine tuning, but man, uh, this test drive was awesome, even though the weather was absolutely miserable. So we have another style of steering wheel we're gonna try, which is gonna be much more solid mounting points for our brake and throttle. And we're also gonna put a different, better brake cable on it. What you doing, man? Splitting wood. Oh. Like a lumberjack. I hear you. Like a ninja? No, a lumberjack. No, sounded, Ninjas don't split wood. Sounded like a ninja, though. So in the test drive, I mentioned that the brakes try to work. And here's the issue we're having. You pull them, and uh, our, the actual pivot point where they're mounted to the steering wheel, it just is sloppy. So if we mount it to something like that, we're going to be a lot better off. It's just a matter of, will this fit our legs? So it's just a re-drill and re-tap. What do you think? 40 weight. 50 weight? 50 weight. <laughs> Why don't you hop in there, man, and see if, if you can even turn it and... Uh, we'll just drill it and... <laughs> and then try it? Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to test it. Can we put the uh, back on it? This is right on the line of, of working for me. I think it, it'll work. All right, so the steering wheel's installed. I'm digging the look, though. Look at it. John's going to give it a... He's got horns now. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to give it a shot, see yeah. if it'll want to stop. Got throttle, and we've got... Oh! Better than it was, dude. Way better it than it It looks like it works. It'll stop now. <laughs> that is sweet. I can pull on it harder, I just... Yeah. This second. All right. Well, uh, we can always give that a shot. Yeah, let me do a comfort test. Well... Even though it is non-existent. <laughs> it failed the comfort Ooh. test. Um, you know, I think, I think it'll work, boss. Another area we've been meaning to tune on this Bronco has been suspension stiffness. So right now we're using these Chromies from Go Power Sports. And they're a little bit on the soft side for this application. Thankfully, they sell these black ones, which is kind of a medium stiffness, and these red ones, which is their stiffest option. So the nice thing is they're pretty much all drop-ins with each other. So chrome and black are same length. Black is a little bit bigger around and a little bit stiffer than chrome. And then you have red here, which is about an inch longer, bigger around than black, and even stiffer than black as well. And we verified with our butt suspension tuners. So, uh, we're thinking we're just going to plop out these uh, chromes all the way around and put in these blacks and see if that fixes our suspension softness issue. But I think it's cool that, you know, they sell shocks that are all just drop in to each other. So let's get to it. So what we're doing is measuring, uh, like at ride height, the chrome shocks. And it's nine and a half inches, right? Nine and a half inches. And then you're gonna sit on the front. Yep. And we're gonna measure again. Yep. We're gonna take note, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the black shocks. Ready when you are, Chief. All right, dude. You, did you want to measure it again, just to be sure? Nine and one half. Yeah, nine, nine and a half. Why not? Why not? That's what I got. Yep. That's what I got. All right. Here we go. Hey. So if you've got some travel. All right. Should I bounce first? Oh. Let me bounce. Okay. Trying to settle it. Yeah. Yeah, that's bottomed out, dude, for sure. Yeah. About four and a half. Four and a half? Yep. But also just take note of like the actual stiffness, right? Because. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, four and a half. That's four pretty much half. bottomed out, isn't it? It was uh, about a sixteenth to a quarter of an inch from being bottomed out. Yep. Interesting. Uh, well, what are you, you going to do, bud? 
Well, I'm going to take the bottom one loose first. And I'm hoping that when that bolt comes out to a certain point, I can rock the shock I to get it you. to come out. I feel you. We've been really good on, on making things serviceable. We've kind of failed in that department. Yeah, a little bit, but whatever. Oh! hey -o. Nice job. Ow. Down. There we go. There we go. Woo! But you gotta hold your tongue right, man. Just right. So we swapped on the black shocks, and we went ahead to full stiff the full stiff setting on the shocks. It was interesting on full soft, they were actually a little bit softer than full stiff on the chromes. So right now we're at 10 and an eighth, which is just over a half inch taller than, uh, okay. than it rides with chromes. All right. We are at five, about five. So it's a half inch taller than uh it's it's definitely stiffer. Yeah. So you can feel it it's stiffer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You think that's gonna work for us or we need to go to red? Um <clears throat> I think it'll work for us because we're not adding anything more to the front with weight. With no. weight. And you want that cush when you hit when when you oh, hit yeah. the bump. Yeah, you stiff. want it to be a little soft. To, yeah, but. you don't want to be too stiff. So I think maybe you ought to ride this one and see what you think. And try it. Um, Sounds good. For the backs, did you uh, want to... You want the back to be stiffer too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not advised. Not advised? To sit on it. Yeah, he's her. sitting on the thing, undoing the upper shock mount. <laughs> I'm gonna move. I okay. promise. Oh yeah, you'll move when that shock comes uh, loose. So basically, we're gonna see if um, if we can even fit the black shock because, like we mentioned, it is larger around than the chrome one here, and we're already really close to the chassis. I mean, if it were to rub a little bit, it'd be all right. But I'd be okay with I a little just... bit of rubbing action, dude. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the back. We're gonna measure stock, or I say stock, but we're gonna measure the chrome. Um, shocks that we have on here at ride height and then compressed and then we're going to do the black ones. So right now we're looking at 13 and uh, 5 eighths uh, ground clearance. And now we're looking at 10 and a half. So we're going to yank these double crimes. Check. Okay. Double check. What did I say? Ten and a half. Now it's ten. <laughs> One more time. Yep. And it's ten again. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna remove these chromes and put on the blacks. All right. So height should be the same. This should be ride height. Yeah. Should be the same. That looks stiffer to me. Oh yeah. Feels stiffer? Feels stiffer. Oh mama. Uh, 11 and the, a quarter. Okay. It's about 11. <laughs> 11 and a half. Okay. So somewhere around 11 and a quarter. Okay. So that's gained, yeah, about a, Wow, a lot. How much? Like an inch. Okay. So that's kind of what we wanted, right? Yeah. Not as stiff on the rear as the front, it feels like. But I think it'll be okay. It's worth a shot. A test drive, yeah. Yeah. I have to say I like the look of chrome better, but uh, blacks look out of place because they're all new. Yeah. It's all right. So, yeah, dude. About ready for another ride, man. It's pretty good. We're going to save the real test drive for the next video, which is going to be uh, the Bronco four-wheel drive go-kart versus our original four-wheel drive go-kart. 
the four engine go-kart. It should be a pretty sweet showdown uh, between our two of our our two only four-wheel drive machines, and it should be a pretty good way to compare kind of how far our, our fab skills have come in the last four or five years or ever since we built that machine. Um, Rewatching some of the footage, I think this thing could still be a little bit shorter in the final drive department, but that's something we can work out. Uh, we can swap out in you know 15 minutes down the road, but it's really shaping up, shaping up to be something special. So thanks for watching this episode, everybody. Check Ike out over here at Isaac. It'll be fun. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode and you want to help support our future builds, uh, go to our website cars-cameras.com and pick up one of our blazing trails hoodies or one of our stickers hats uh or t-shirts but our hoodies are very very high uh, quality they're extremely comfortable uh you could sleep in them if you were blindfolded and you like felt a bunch of different hoodies you'd be able to tell this one apart because it's so nice anyway uh, uh leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode uh check us out on facebook at cars and cameras reviews and instagram at john underscore cars and cameras in between videos to see what we are up to Got a lot planned. Oh man, I hope I didn't spoil anything in the background of this video. Uh, you guys are just gonna have to find out in a future episode. Anyway, thanks again for watching guys. We'll catch you next time. So we've got a new sprocket installed. We have their chains. So we have our new sprocket installed. We have our chains installed. Why did I say installed twice? Yeah, that works, whatever. Blooper. <laughs>